Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So now we'll come back to our next lecture. Today I will uh, present some uh, simulation of Parisian flow. Of simulation of Parisian flow. So I restrict myself to 1D because uh, so for the higher dimension, it, we may not have enough time, so, so we can but uh, extend it is, uh, directly, it is straightforward. So the domain, consider the domain domain omega is just like one int a interval is some in R1, this is R. Let there are n pedestrians having positions position xi and velocity pi for i is equal to 1 to n. So their equation of motion equation of motions are equations of motion are given by So we change the particle with the velocity so dx by dt is vi, d, so dx i by dt is vi, dvi by dt is equal to some force is a function of xi minus xj and there is another function which is a function of xi di and uh, maybe rho i. So this I call is as 39.1 equation number. So for i is equal to 1 to up to n pedestrian we have. So where so this is just this is the velocity because we know if we know the velocity we find the position but to find the velocity we have to solve the, the second equation dBi by dt is equal to f plus g this is the forces where f is the social interaction force it means uh, is given by the child is given by the gradient of a potential the gradient of a potential so capital V so this V is different from this or let me say the Psi is a potential such that f is equal to minus the gradient of so here del f by del f yeah so it is just the gradient of potential now is since we are in 1D 
is the daily f by daily x. And uh, so what we can write that, suppose, so what is the, uh, the potential f? The putting, uh, sorry, this del del psi by del x. So what is psi? Suppose you have there are two pedestrian. They have the interaction radius r. So this is x i, and this is interaction radius also r. It is x j. So he is going maybe this direction, he is going to this direction. So V is just, it is just given by some, so if they are coming together, if the distance between x i minus x j is less equal to r, so they have interaction. So if they are coming together very close, so they will not collide. So they will go somewhere in 1D, either this goes to their side or it goes to their side. So that they do not overlap here. So they have interaction. This means they have repulsive force. So uh, then, psi can be given as a heavy side function, h is 2r minus xi minus xj, so this is absolute value in 2D, and then there is some constant, some kn times so interaction constant 2 r square minus xi minus xj times, so once more it will be in, in it is times 2r minus norm of xi minus xj divided by 2, it is half for example, it is minus half. So, del psi by del x, we get uh, explicitly this is equal to the heavy side function h 2r minus norm xi minus xj kn times 2r minus xi minus xj so is the absolute value here times n. So where h is a heavy side function, it means so h is equal to one if we have absolute value of x i minus x j less than equal to 2r, 0, else if they are very far, no interaction, so there is it is 0, if they are less than that, there is interaction, we put it 1. And uh, kn is interaction coefficient constant, it is somehow given value. So n is the normal, unit normal, so n is equal to xi minus xj divided by absolute value of xi minus xj, so if they are close together, so either, so n is equal to either plus or, either mi or minus. So they may go either this direction or this direction, that gives you the interaction direction. And then we have another force here, so this is the interaction force, so it, it does not allow the two pedestrians to collide each other, if they are inside within, within certain, their interaction radius r, so they will be 
repulse, they, they will going away, either left or right. So the another function, another function, G is or oh, another force, yeah. So another force is uh, so this force G is the the force which gives a desired force, yeah. So G, this is a direction force. Direction force with desired velocity. So every position has its own desired velocity. So it can be, it is given as 1 over T. So this is a reaction time minus the velocity U of rho. del phi by del x divided by absolute value of del phi by del x minus b of i. So what does it mean? So it means that uh, this value, so t is the reaction time. U of rho, it may be like if you remember, we have the traffic law that it is a U max times 1 minus rho by rho max. So, if there is a very large density, is a rho is equal to rho max, U rho is the speed is 0. So, they cannot move, there are more people in front, or if there is almost 0 density, no. Prediction was is ahead, so then it is uh, u rho is equal to u max. So they move with the maximum speed. It is same as which we have presented in our previous earlier lecture, some traffic law, traffic flow equation. So in this, then what we get that, so what is another function of phi? So another function of phi is, and then the function of phi is the solution of iconal equation so it is given by u of u of rho absolute value of del phi by del x is equal to 1 so this is the iconal equation so I can now it is I give I 39.2. So I can equation equation gives the pedestrian so it gives the pedestrian the shortest path. to reach its destination. So if so, so pedestrian is sitting here, if his exit is that door, so it will be the shortest path for him. If somebody is sitting there, from there to there, it will be shortest path. So it, it is in 1D. This is just like a line, straight line. But if it is 2D, then one has to, because one cannot go through this table, so either he should go like this or he should take the, the he should move around the table. So that also will give you the optimal path or shortest path to reach the destination. And now the question is that uh, how do we solve? So what is this uh, equation looks like? Yeah. So suppose I ha we have the boundary. So, how to solve 39.2? So, for the sake of simplicity, you, we take for uh, 
for simplicity and then where do you get a rho from? So rho is given by, so the density again before that, the density rho is obtained from rho is equal to 1 over n max of h. So what it does mean? So this is the summation of over all, all pedestrian with xi minus xj, so absolute value here, less equal to h, 1. So it means the total number of, so nh is the maximum number of pedestrian in radius h. So if I have, so there is an interval here, if this is the h, so it is a half, this is the h here, and another h here. So we have some maximum number of pedestrians which can be accommodated in this, uh, this interval. If, so there is this gives you the total number nh. So if there are more people less than, so there are more people going very, very congested. So n, then there it will be larger than nh, then we get density larger than 1. So if there are less people compared to nh, then we get the density less than 1. So this is the definition, but at the moment for the very, to handle very simple case, so in order to make our simulation and the beginning very, very simple, so I restrict myself that, so I take, it is independent of rho, means I just take u of rho is 1, for example, just suppose it is a constant density there, so then I can take 1 for simplicity. We consider u of rho is equal to 1. So this means our equation 39.2 is given by absolute value of del phi by del x is equal to 1. So this is very, very simple. Now how to solve it? So we need also boundary condition, condition since we have the domain a to b i of a and i of v so if if the pedestrian has the destination, A is the desired, is the desired destination. So when the pedestrian walk and reach the destination A here, then we will have phi of A is equal to the distance to be traveled is 0. Similarly, If B is the destination, is the desired then we will have I of V is equal to 0, then again if the prediction reaches the, the position B, then phi of V is 0. If both ins are open, but like both are exit, means uh, then this implies phi of a is 0 and phi of v also 0. So these are the boundary conditions what we have. So we can solve, this is very simple, this is a nonlinear equation. So this equation now 39.3.
equation 39.3 is a nonlinear hyperbolic equation. So we, we know the difficulty of nonlinear equation, even if we have a very smooth solution after a certain time, it somehow we get a shock or this thing. So the numerical approximation we need to, to approximate the derivative by upwind approximation. And now, so let us see that, so since it is 1D, very simple geometry, we can solve this 39.3 analytically. So what does it mean? So let, now AB is equal to just I put right minus 1 to 1, okay? So just give, take the, the interval from minus 1 to 1. The boundary condition, so solve to solving 39.3 with boundary condition phi of minus 1 is equal to 0 and phi of 1 is equal to 0. So both the binary boundary condition I consider. So what we have that we have two cases. So now this is uh, minus 1 to 1. Okay. So now case 1. So if phi of minus 1 is 0, this implies, so minus 1 is the smallest, smallest boundary. So this is 0 means phi is minimum. Because why it is minimum? Because phi is a distance function. Distance cannot be negative. So distance are always positive. So phi is minimum at smallest boundary point. This implies phi has, so if it is smallest in the boundary points, it has a tendency to go up. So it has tendency to increase. This when it is increasing means the derivative of phi x is positive. The case 2, if phi of 1 is 0, this implies phi is minimum at the largest largest boundary. So this implies phi has tendency to decrease. So this implies phi of x is negative. So it means in this end phi is going up and somewhere this in then finally phi is going coming down. So if I have only one boundary condition, then the, my phi will be of course it is always increasing. So if I have only this boundary condition, there is no boundary condition because I have only one equation. So it is decreasing like that. Yeah. Now let us solve this. We can solve it. So we can solve uh, this equation to solve 39.5 to so solving 39.3 analytically if i x positive this implies absolute value of i x should be it is just i of x so absolute value of phi x is equal to 1. This implies 
So if it is positive, it is pi x is 1 integrating i is equal to x plus c. C is a integration constant. So using boundary condition. I of so I, if it is positive, then what I will have it has I am in the point of phi will be at minus one. Yeah, so phi of minus one is equal to zero. This implies so if I put the phi is minus one zero means zero is equal to minus one plus c. This implies c is equal to one. So i of x is equal to if I put it C here, we get X plus C is 1 means 1 plus X. Yeah? Similarly, so two key, uh, the end of the case, that similarly, if I of X is negative, this implies we can write absolute value of pi X is equal to minus pi X. So this is the definition. So this implies what we get, absolute value of phi x is 1, so this implies, so is equal to 1 means, so if it is negative, minus of phi x is equal to 1, so integrating this we get phi of x is equal to, so minus, minus phi of x is equal to x plus c, so at this point, what do we get? So this point we get, if we put the boundary condition that uh, i at the point 1, because since it is negative, it means it is decreasing in the last point is equal to 0, implies if we plug here, 0 is equal to 1, it is only 0, 1 plus c, this implies c is equal to minus 1. So, i of x is equal to, you plug it here, is a, c is minus 1 means x minus 1. 1 minus x. No, no, it should be, so here x is minus 1 here. So, this implies c is equal to minus 1, c is equal to 1 here. So phi of x is equal to 1 minus x. So then we got two solutions. So one is 1 plus x. So this implies our solution phi of x is equal to 1 minus x. So 1 minus x if phi of x is, is positive. No, it is if it is negative here, the pi of x is negative, and then another one, 1 plus x, if pi x is positive. It means we have here minus 1, 1, somewhere at point 0, point 0.5, so we have the solution like that. Yeah? So if I have only one boundary condition, so my solution will be, so this is here, so it is 1 here, yeah? So this is 1 here. So I have coming to, uh, so this is 0. So coming from 0 up to here, so anyway exactly I have minus 1 distance. Going from here to here, I have exactly the distance also 1, yeah? So the, this is the distance. Coming to minus 1, I have 1. Going to there, I also have 1. So now we solve it numerically in the next lecture, either with the finite difference or uh, our mastery method. So uh, see you in the next lecture. I will just solve this. This is analytical, but I solve with a numerical method. Okay, thank you.